Hello YouTube! Welcome back to Dark Souls. Uh, I know this isn't where I ended up last time. I just walked back in, back into the big hall. You know, where I talked about the giants with the clock. They can use miracles and the, the one arch dude. I bought six Twinkling Titanites from the giant blacksmith. So that I have ten. So I can basically fully upgrade. Yeah, the Dragon Slayer Great Bow, uh, so I can fully upgrade the Grant when I get it. Dragon Slayer Great Bow is probably what you'd call a quality weapon. Uh, the, term, the term quality weapon comes from Demon Souls, where a thing you could, a path you could upgrade your weapons with was the, the quality path, which would make them scale roughly equally from both strength and dexterity. But yeah, you need considerable strength and dexterity to wield the Dragon Slayer Great Bow. So, Leroy, Le Le other than miracles, are probably my best chance if I need range. Am I recording? <laughs> I hope I am. I should turn on the timer. And also now that I'm out, I'm just gonna turn down the alarms ringtone a bit. Don't need to scare myself half the devil. <laughs> okay. Uh, this guy is the probably the most annoying part of his place. Since he can hit you from pretty far away. Okay, they have pretty long aggro range, those two. So, uh, as probably mentioned now that I'm here, if you hadn't murdered Lautrec early like I did, you would have gotten an I he would have murdered the firekeeper at Firelink, the quiet lady under the And in her place you would find a black eye orb which has was description of something like invade the world of the guilty or something like that. It would react when you get here. So, like, it was like you get a message saying that it's it's it, it's it's vibrating or some shit. Uh, and you could then use it to do like the, I think the only NPC invasion in the game, which would then invade the world of Lautrec, the one who killed the Firekeeper and stole his soul. Okay, I, I'm absolutely out of mind. I'm down to like not that many. Uh, healing items, four specifically. Uh, the boss tend to be kind kind of difficult because it's two. I mean, I don't know how many times I'm gonna say this. It's two people. Uh, The way I, I like to take out Ornstein first, he's the fastest and, in my opinion, the most annoying of them. No, oh, gee. All the way for Solaire, I, it's a little fun thing. I think I mentioned a bit before with uh, Shiva of the East is that there used to be another NPC invasion, like we could invade an NPC. And that was. That was with Shiva. It's that you would get the if you give if you get the Chaos Blade, one of the possible boss weapons for with the soul of Quelac, he could he would ask for it and if you give it to him he would murder you with it. You sort of go crazy with it. Oh. I I just Um uh, if he did that he would disappear then and leave a another orb. And it would then react another black eye it orb. It would then react if you went to Painted World of Ariamis. Um, where you would h encounter him and his ninja companion in a fight. I think it's practically working in the files. 
It's just the triggers don't happen. It's, uh, as Pro mentioned, uh, another pr thing practical ripped off of, ripped out of like Demon Souls. The character named Sasuke. Oh, failed. I'm gonna give it another shot. Sasuke. Sasuke? I don't remember his name right now, right, right now, something Japanese. He would ask for a sword. I don't forget the sword's name. It's similar to the Chaos Blade. And it would, and the similar thing was he would then murder you when he got his hands on it to test it if it was as deadly as he said it was. That's Mo. It's a pretty cool little cutscene here. I wonder if he practiced this. <laughs> It's just like, what is Ornstein doing upstairs? Ah, we are swore Ornstein always started with just charging at you. I don't need them both on. Okay, this is this is how I wanted it, I think. Um, as I think, I don't remember exactly the reward you get differs depending on who you kill first. Also the second part of the fight, where the... They basically absorb the other one and get their powers. Which in other words mean that smoke gets lightning powers and... And Ornstein gets big powers. Whoa. Yeah, I did it right. So with Soul Smo, you can make the hammer he was wielding, which is the highest, his highest strength requirement of any weapon in the game. I think it's 52. That's, that's like to one handed. You can two handed at, I don't know, 30 something. So, again, I murdered Lord Trek way, too, way earlier, but if I hadn't done that, and done like the fight with him. His armor would have spawned up here, I think. On either side. I it's been a while, I don't usually do it because it's easier this way. Just you just knock him off the edge. Get a good ring early on. So we're basically I'm gonna few gonna put good uh, in this is gonna be one point vitality. Uh, so this is like oh uh, I I haven't done in like real checking out on this. I I think this is like the halfway point. The game really opens up after this. This is Guinevere. Yeah, she doesn't have like no NPCs move their lips in this game. She has a uh, talk animation that goes on un unused. She has a very she's a very striking character. A lot of people remember encountering her. Fun fact: I remember reading this. Uh, Miyazaki, director of the game, he he didn't actually like the design when he saw it. It was like he really didn't. But the the guy who had made it, the designer of it, he was so excited, he was so happy with the result. Miyazaki just couldn't just couldn't say no to him. He was like, mm. <laughs> just, that was a weird noise, but 
So basically what that there does is we are now able to warp between certain set bonfires. Including the the bonfires in question are the ones with uh, typically are those that has a firekeeper or those that has some connection to a covenant. Uh, there are a few exceptions that you can warp to and from. Heaven. Um, you don't have to go vi do this. Uh, I've been told you could just run down there, like while he's there, and you would survive the fall. Now I have a bad track record, bad history with things like that. I really like the serpent's designs, but they are both grotesque and silly at the same time. They're very unique, and I, I really li like them. So, behind this door is the final area of the game. We're not ready to go there yet. Since we need first of all to have gotten Lord Vessel, which he did, which is put it there, it looks nice. Now we need to fill the Lord Vessel with powerful souls. More specifically, the souls of the other gods. There's the soul of well not real not all of them are gods. Like the god is sort of a rank here. There's the soul of the the bed of chaos, the who was like an Origi one, one, who's like the original pyromancer. We need the soul of Nito, who's basically death incarnate. He, he sort of maintains his flow of death in this world. We have the soul of uh, Thief the Scaleless, who is a mad dragon who became a count after he helped he helped Gwyn murder all the other dragons. Now, we'll be heading off to... Well... Uh, little thought here... The next area... Well, now, I don't think it should be a problem, really. Uh, next area has a little... Well, I think I mentioned it in like, the first episode. We're going back to the... to the catacombs, now. Yeah, so if you talk with that guy, he's, he, his main shtick is that he's given up. He's, he's, he's tired, he, he really doesn't care much. Yeah, he's undead, but he doesn't feel any need to, you know, ring the bell. Or any of other shit like that. He just, he just sits there. He's really been comfortable doing that. Okay, this chest uh, is a bit special. There aren't many items in the game that's like super duper important. Any that are though, if you were to drop those, and they basically in, in, like leave the area or something, they they the quest chest would be closed. And you could then find the item that you dropped in there. I don't know any specific examples, okay? I, I apparently got that. The statue you saw there, I think that's unique. There is files from an older version of the game that suggest it was able that it was supposed to move. Basically, it would be. It, it's basically it was the original way to the altar where you place the Lord Vessel. Now I remember that also a little thing. Originally, skeletons didn't drop souls. Because, well, that they're undead, they don't have souls and shit. Was a thing. Was a thinking. Which I mean, it makes sense. 
just turns out having it go up players go through an entire area where they don't get souls uh, it it's it kind of sucks uh the weapons do bleed which uh, I don't know if it's explained bleed I've talked about it before it's a pretty annoying status status effect it's basically like you lose a bunch of health the second it triggers can be pretty devastating uh, early on or if you just have low health I'm one shotting those guys. The Spyhander is uh pretty cool. It just in general Spyhanders are pretty cool, like one of my favorite swords and like they're like an actual historical weapon used by German so, German uh, mercenaries called Landsknecht which were they're also just absolutely massive weapons which is a thing I can just like in reali realistic those things were long as fuck I f I don't have exact measurements right now, but uh, they could well they could well be longer than like taller than a human. Now this is this is pretty good at time to end it, end what this episode and can start the next one, going through uh, whatever this area ended up being called. Until then, have a good day.